Amen. 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 So, Father, we thank you for tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, that we're in your presence. <coughs> Lord, we thank you, Lord, that it says that you will show us the path of life. Amen. And we pray tonight, Lord, that you will show each one of us, Lord, the path of life. Lord, that leads us into your presence. Lord, not your presence in some future date, but, Lord, your presence right here, right now, in the everyday moment that we live, that we might know the presence of the living God. Lord, the anointing of the living God. And Father, let me pray for David, Lord, as he brings the word, Lord, that you anoint him and bless him. Father, we thank you for him. Lord, we thank you for the, the grace, Lord, the, that has been upon his life. Lord, the journey that he's been on. And Lord, that you've shown him the path of life. Father, tonight we pray, Lord, that you'll, again, just drop fresh grace into each of our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I'm going to park myself somewhere. <coughs> thank you, David. Over to you. Right, well, thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Tonight, there's something I'm going to speak on that affected me this last week, and probably through my family and work as well. The heading is prayer versus anxiety. Prayer versus anxiety. Now, why I'm, why you, uh, uh, why I'm bringing that, uh, it's something that's, that's really, um, this has really helped me this week, actually. First, I'm going to tell you that, you know, the word prayer is mentioned in the Bible 132 times. So it's obviously that God is saying something to us, but the answer is to everything. That is prayer. And it's also mentioned twice. This is a um, verse in Samuel 7, 27. God is telling us how important prayer is to our everyday life situations. What I'm saying about that is because this week I've had to come to a place where I've had to trust in God for <coughs> anxiety in my life and in work life especially. I'm going to give you some sort of it's, it's, uh, some sort of thing. You know that um, in work, that if, in work, we are put in a position where we have to sit with people, and we have to, and they are pouring on all their problems, which which can raise up an anxiety level into our lives. You know, we seem to think because we are Christians that anxieties or worries does not affect us. Well, it, well, I can tell you it does. But, I mean, so, but even <coughs> to that, you know, we can only do so much as people. But in the only Philippians 4, 6, 7 says, do not be anxious. So that is something... I've had to put into practice. Yeah. I've known that scripture, I've read that scripture, but I've had to I've had to come to God and say, right, God, through this week, there's things that I can't share, but it's been very, very anxious. But I mean, you know, I've had to even today I've had to say to God, you know, you say in that scripture, do not be anxious. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard sometimes to put this word, do not be anxious. Mm -hmm into being you know the anxious what you know the anxious can be i mean the the anxious worry depression which we all go through yeah. which comes under the umbrella of mental health yeah. the reason i'm saying that is because mm -hmm. i work in mental health and and this um <coughs> and this what surprised me this is what i actually coodled it says that mental disorder in britain the 7.8% meeting the criteria for 4 to 10% of people in England experience it. Mm. But the thing is, right, but God, and that's it, but the thing again is, is that, but, but, but the thing, what's good about that is God comes to say, do cast all your cares upon me, mm. for he cares for you. Mm. And that's something else that through our situations, I've learned this week, 
we have to cast our cares. And when, you, and when I was doing back the word casting, I mean, I used to go fishing with my father years ago, and we had used to have a competition of who could cast the furthest with his weight. The thing is, my dad always used to cheat. <laughs> he, he always used to have this this pendulum casting. Casting, I didn't know what. So he used to swing and always go further. But the further it went, is what Jesus is saying to us: cast your cares, cast them as far as you can. Because the thing is, what you know, because if you because if you keep the worries. And the, and the anxiety upon your life, it does not do any good. But Jesus has given us a, a great answer there. Cast your cares upon him. And in Psalm 34, for it said, I sought, or in other words, to seek the Lord. And he answered me. Now that was another thing I was just seeking. Have you ever thought what the word seeking is all about? Have you ever, when you were kids, went and, uh, went and did like a, you know, when you seek some out, uh, hide and seek? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the kid would never, ever give up until he found that. They would seek this thing out all the way. And, you, and sometimes God is telling us, you know, you know to seek, mm -hmm. seek, yeah. go to him. And, and, and um, with that seeking, I mean... God, when I was praying about it, you know, God, it, it's a matter of not just, you know, you come to God and you can pray to God, but it was like God showed me, you know, he wanted to get hold of your hand. He wants to walk with you. Yeah. It's not just a matter of speaking the words, but it's a matter of having that c connection with God. And it was, and it was, uh, and God re dropped this in to, to my heart. Basically, you know, he, he wanted to get hold of my hand. He wants to have a, that relationship. So through all these <coughs> things, of what I'm thinking about anxiety and all that stuff, it, we have to come to a point where we try and cast them away and learn to grab hold to God. Got to hold of his hand. It's like when we trust somebody, we share, we can share things. Because, because, but it has to be a trust. But, but when we speak to people, speak to our wives or your husband, you know very well that some things get sorted, they get answered. But you know, but even then, it's not. It's, it isn't um, the answer. You know, when you go to the Father, you go to and you ask Him. Things can be. It, it's more. It's. It, it is even more of a relationship than you have with your own uh, wife. Because God can answer. I know that things with your wife or your husband, it gets done over and back time. But God can do things that is really unbelievable. Like in today, I had to go to this meeting work. And uh, this is it's all about ch changing hours and different things like that. But even that, boy, I went through it. I didn't know what was happening or anything. And, and that causes anxiety. So that even, you know, so there's a time when you have to put things into his, into his, um, his hands. In 1 Chronicles it says, as I was just saying, seek the Lord, seek his face continually. In, 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 in the times when we're weak, for instance, and, and we just haven't struck, and we, and we seem to sit down, we, and, and we just haven't got that uh, strength to carry on, <laughs> like I have had. <coughs> but, you know, to seek him, it, it's not, it's, it isn't an easy thing. It's not easy to come to God all the time in the most difficult, most hardest times that we can have. But he's there. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's amazing. And I was looking up the word seek, and I can't add it. The word seek describes, is an easier way to lay out information, word to give words than define what it means. It, um, it's the word seek means, this, it, B A. Q 
Q-A-R, whatever that word means, is to seek the pleasure or delight. Mm -hmm. This word can be found in Psalm 24, 7. One thing I have desired, Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all my days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of his temple. Another word is, is, is I caution it, is, is to seek, search, or to consult. That's brilliant, to consult. Think about one, to consult something. You know, it, to consult, you're going to ask somebody, you know, you want to go, you want to know more about what is all this, is to consult, so something is it? It's to consult. And the word has been used to describe seeking something that is lost, missing, to seek one face, or to aim at to devote oneself, and to concern about something. The word Akash is used in Jeremiah 29, 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. Yes. Amen. With all your heart. So in them times when you're going through, I was sitting in my own life anyway, it's a time when I've had to seek him. I've had to pray. It's been hard. But to continually go after him. And I announced that word, it said to consult. I love that word, to consult. But, but just to search him. To seek and to search. Unless, I mean, I've had to come to a place where, where I've had to seek and to search a lot of things about, about <coughs> this week and past life with family. But God has given me a peace, a peace that the world can't give. Mm -hmm. And he's settled a few things with my heart. Because, but the thing is that sometimes you cannot fathom out you can't fathom out his peace you can't fathom out the things that he does it's amazing it's amazing what he's done for, for me those things go off again um, <coughs> and uh, hang on, let me just get this thing right I'll be back to the mid yeah, and uh, in Philippians 4, 4 17, it says, Yeah, and that the peace of God will transcend, I was just saying, all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All understandings. What is our understanding of things? What is our understanding? You know, we've got to come to a, I, I personally think, we've got to come to an understanding of, of where we are. If we let things like um, as I, as I, this week involve my mind and to get me in, into situations, then all my understanding is, 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 is all on that side. But I've got to get the understanding of God because when you get that understanding mm -hmm. of God within your life, it changes your, your understanding, gives you a fresh peace, but it, it just takes you into a new area mm -hmm. and that's what I think and that's something <coughs> and there's something else that, that you know and there's something else you know, um, that uh, what, what, what is with prayer as well you know when Jesus before he did anything <coughs> he went up the hill and prayed and I think that's what you must do before we do anything <coughs> Whether it's work, whether it's whatever, is pray because through that, God will lead us. He will bring us peace. He will bring us understanding. He will guide us. So things that, are, that are, the world tends to throw at you is will not affect you as much. I don't think because God is there all the time with you. It's when we don't, when we don't go to that point of that. Closet. I've learned, you know, about going into his closet. Mm -hmm. 
where it's uh, where it's where it is a uh, where it's a good place where it's only you and where it's you card. Yeah. And that's a connection. That's something else that has been really helpful to me. I know it's it's only a short message, but it's the first time I've, I have tried to to bring some sort of a teaching that I, it's, it's, a, it's the first word. time for me. So have you so be gracious with me. It's a good word. But for me, you know, I just wonder, just God bless you on that, and I hope that what I've said tonight will bring some sort of some sort of enlightening mm -hmm. to you, yeah. Yeah. as it helped me. Mm -hmm. But I know that we all suffer with anxiety, we all have worries, and we all have different things, but it's just if we can just go to the Father, and consult Him. Yeah. 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 You know, go to the point of not just letting the, the earthly or the worldly part of it try and take over, because that's what it wants to do. It just wants to destroy you. Wants to eat you up basically, but we have an answer to whatever our situation is that God can mm. bring us to the point of mm. peace and understanding and direct us down the road. That we know that when we come into battles like I do <coughs> in my family, different things, that I don't have to be stressful, I don't have to bring anxiety which. <coughs> as the job would know the things that's going on that um, you know that uh, I can go to a father yes a father that that has opened my heart because one time I didn't I uh, the father thing was something I did, that I struggled with mm -hmm. but I can go to a father now that can give me the peace mm -hmm. and I know very well when I go to him and I and I speak to and I speak to God and say God you know the situation, and I can step out without any form of, um, <coughs> of anxiety and stressfulness mm -hmm. in my life because I know a father that is good, mm -hmm. he yeah. loves you, mm -hmm. he wants yeah. the best for you, yeah. mm -hmm. Never leave yeah. and he wants to walk with you yeah. hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, he yeah. wants you to share with him yeah. Yeah. as he wants to share with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he wants to be your father, Amen. As, as he does with me. Yeah. So bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that that word is simple, you know, because the Lord Jesus Christ, He always made the word simple, mm. so we could understand. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anyone who's in this in this uh, anyone here, anyway who's never suffered from anxiety. Every one of us yeah. have had reason to be anxious. And the scriptures, you know, Philippians 4, verses 6, you know it really well. It says, be anxious for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Dead easy to read. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dead easy to quote. Yeah. Not dead easy to do. Um, I'm just right on the back of something Dave said. Some of you know about this, but I'll just share something when... I was struck with struck with a level of anxiety which was out of this out of this world. Mm -hmm. 9th of December 2016, 20 past two in the morning. Mm -hmm. I get a phone call. Uh, you know, I'm asleep, fast asleep, deep in sleep. And this is North Wales Police. Can you answer your front door? There's two police in there. <coughs> Think for a moment. I know my son's out. I know he's been on a motorbike. What do you think is going through my mind? Yeah. Yeah. Going downstairs. What do you think is going through my mind when I open the door and I te see two policemen with ashen face and invite them in? What do you think I'm thinking at that very moment? What's to your son? Yeah. No, I didn't know what's happened. I thought my son's dead. And that I cannot tell you the level of anxiety. And the police, you know, they were very kind and they said, look, your son's been in a very serious accident. Um, he was found by a <coughs> duty policeman. 
um, unconscious and you need to get to the hospital right away, go to the family room. What do you think I'm thinking mm. whilst I'm driving? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What my wife's thinking? When we get to the family room, a consultant comes through and he says to us, um, your son's in an induced coma. Um, you can come through and see him if you want, but uh, he doesn't look too good. And we don't know just how things are going to turn out. Do we want to see him? Yes, we do. But we go in and he's full of tubes and his face is full of blood. Am I anxious? <laughs> you bet your bottom dollar I'm anxious. The first words out of my mouth as we went into that room was, oh Jesus. So we, um, we talk with uh, some consultant, I don't know, and they tell us, believe it or not, this is true, they, they'd sent um, a brain scan to Australia <coughs> and that's to wait for results to come back because obviously they were open. In Australia, I don't know how many hours they are in front of us, but they were, so they sent it to Australia and they, we were to transfer Richard to um, Stoke University Hospital, which is the major trauma um, hospital for our, our area. So Margaret and I go, go back to the family room and we pray. And I say to God, Lord, your word says, yeah. The anxious for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I'm so scared. Yeah. Lord, I'm so anxious. Mm. Lord, I've got to turn to you. How can you tell me not to be anxious? So I said, but you said, mm. if by <coughs> prayer and supplication, yeah. with thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah. I let my request be known unto God, yeah. Yeah. then the peace of God will guard yeah. My heart and my mind yeah. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And so uh, Margaret and I, we pray that and we're still full of anxiety. And we go <coughs> home. We're going to transfer him uh, still in an induced coma. Yeah. And I remember it's around about 11 o'clock and uh, we're, we're having a cup of tea. I said to Margaret, I said, sweetheart, I don't know why. I feel at peace. Mm. I, I, it's like a cloud Mary had come down Amen. Mm. And, and embraced me and enveloped me. And, yeah. and, she, and Margaret yeah. turned, she said, I too feel at peace. Yeah. Yeah. So I just said, everything's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's all right. Yes. Amen. In the natural, mm -hmm. he's in an ambulance. Mm -hmm. He's still in an induced coma. There's a possibility he might die. There's a possibility he might have brain damage. There's hundreds of possibilities. <coughs> but the peace of God has come. Amen. So I've gone from anxiety <coughs> to peace. Amen. But you see, David brought out prayer. <coughs> talk to Father God. You talk to Father God about what's going on. And that's anxiety. We have, it. we have lots of reasons yeah. to be anxious. Yeah. I mean, you quote, David quoted from uh, 1 Peter 4, you know, casting all your cares upon him, mm -hmm. yeah. for he cares for you. We, I don't think we realise for one moment the degree that he cares for us. How mm he -hmm. desires to walk with us. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know if any of you know Brennan Manning. I know Paul does. Well, he doesn't know him personally, but he knows of him and read lots of his books. I've listened to him speak. Um, an ex-Jesuit priest. <laughs> ex-Jesuit priest. Uh, Brennan Manning. Sadly, he's, he's, well, sadly, he's dead now. He's on a, YouTube. He, he, he wrote a book, a fa very famous book called The Ragamuffin Gospel. And uh, when you hear him preach, he preaches with tears in his eyes. Beautiful. He talks about when, when God knocks upon your heart's door. Mm. And when you open the door, yeah. and Papa God comes in and he says, If only you knew yeah. 
I'll have long for this moment. Yeah. If only you knew I were, I've waited day and night for you to see my face, for you to look for me, yeah. for you to come into my presence so I can embrace you. Yeah. This is Father God speaking. Mm -hmm. We don't realise just how good God is. He's a wonderful God. So David, you didn't bring the simple word, David, but a great word. A word that we all can connect with. Jeremiah 29, 13 is special to me because um, the night I came to faith, it was the text that was actually preached. You know, if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. It's beautiful. It's an interesting, um, David quoted from First Chronicles 22, 19. He says, now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. You've got to be in this hook, line and sinker. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't do this thing half-heartedly. I would just wonder, how do people cope with life without God? Mm -hmm. Then the scriptures, you know, talk about people, those who have no hope. I'd hate to be a person who has no hope. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to have hope. Always have hope. Mm -hmm. Paul says, he says, you know, at the end of the day, there's only really three things that matter. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. only three things matter. Faith, mm -hmm. hope, mm -hmm. and love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all the other things don't really matter. Yeah. If you've got faith, if you're fully persuaded and come to agree with God. Yeah. And by the way, it's, uh, I wrote this down, David was talking about <laughs> understanding. See, we're to, you know, trust in the Lord with all of our oh, heart. Yes. Lean not on your own. In all your ways. Or in other words, let me put it just slightly a different way. In all your ways, See things from God's yeah. perspective yeah. instead of your perspective. Because yeah. right, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. yeah, right. you're only seeing it from your earthly perspective. You're only seeing it from where you are, not where God is. Yeah. And God wants you to come to a place where you start to see things from where he is rather than where you are. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It changes things. Yeah. You see, because he is almighty God. He's a wonderful God. And I highly recommend that you seek him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Your mind, will, your emotions, your whole being. You seek God. So, thanks Dave. Thank you. This is very good.